Welcome to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Puglia. You're going to learn exactly what makes Puglia a unique wine producing region, what types of Puglia wines are out there, and where you should be in your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata. I'm a wine importer and author of this book called Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for world-class artisanal wines handcrafted in Italy, many of which have been overlooked and undervalued. My family's from a small village in the Molise region of Southern Italy, and I've been traveling to Italy over 20 years, immersing myself in Italian food, wine, and culture. So first of all, where is Puglia? Well, Puglia is basically the heel of the boot. As you can see in the regional map of Italy, it's colored in yellow. Um, notice how long it is. I believe it has uh, sort of the, it's the longest region in terms of um, coastline uh, distance. So it's in the southern part. What makes Puglia unique? Well, Puglia is the heel of the Italian boot. It has the Adriatic Sea on the east side of the region. And the west side of the hill, you'll find the Ionian Sea. It was discovered by the Greeks thousands of years ago, and Greek influence can still be seen and felt in the region today. This influence is perhaps the strongest in the region because, uh, among like if you were to like compare like all of the regions in Italy, and there is strong Greek influences throughout southern Italy, but I'd say it's the strongest in Puglia in part because of its location. It's the region closest to Greece. Puglia is also famous for what's called trulli, which are these little huts you can see in this picture. These are little stone huts with pointed roofs, which you can see in this photo. Um, this famous town for trulli was built in the 19th century. Um, the word trulli, trulli uh, is rooted in ancient Greek, and there are similar stone huts much older than this that are found in the region. While every region in Italy is known for its phenomenal local food and wine, there are some foods, uh, I mean, obviously Puglia, there's no exception. Wine and food is phenomenal in Puglia, but there are a few foods that you may have heard of, such as burrata, capicolo, or the pasta that's called orecchiette, which are like the little ear pastas. Um, so how should you think about wines from Puglia? Well, um, they have their own native grapes and they also have their own subregions or appellations. Um, but let's cover some of the native grapes. So Puglia has a lot of native grape varietals. I mean, a lot. And I would say, uh, based on what I know, I would say it's more red heavy than white heavy, meaning there are way more red varietals than, than white grape varietals in Puglia. Uh, as you can see on this list here, I, I purposely did not list them all because it's, it's, just, it's just too much, it's just overwhelming. So if you haven't had um, any wines from Puglia, this is a great list to, to take from. If, if you're already somewhat familiar with wines from Puglia, uh, maybe you're already familiar with the Primitivo grape, you know, I would uh, sort of work my way down in that order. If you've already had Primitivo and you feel very comfortable and you, you know basically what to expect from a Primitivo, uh, Negro Amaro might be um, the next choice grape that you should explore, followed, followed by Nero di Troia, then there's Mavasia Nera, Bombino Nero, and then Susu Maniello. That'll keep you busy for a while. And then on the whites, you have Verdeca, Bombino Bianco, Malvasia, and Bianco D'Alessano. All right, I think, I think it's actually pronounced Bianco D'Alessano. Sorry about that. So, um, you know, while all these wines should be easy to find, if you did a little search, you should be able to find um, wines with these grape varietals. The best versions of these wines are, are going to be coming from small artisanal producers that focus more on the quality and originality of those grape varietals and focusing less on mass-produced wines that they don't. Mass-produced wines don't really focus on the originality of the grape varietal. They're instead trying to satisfy millions of people with wines that 
taste similar to whatever's trendy at the time uh, with these chemically altered mass produced wines. So, you know, before you judge any of these grape varietals, I'd recommend you try to find, you know, one or two small batch artisanal versions of them. And that would be something that's produced around 50,000 bottles or less annually, um, you know, before you sort of put a check mark next to any of these varietals. I'd hate, I'd hate for you to like, say, say you've never tasted a Nero di Troia before and you end up picking up a mass producer that makes a million bottles a year of Nero di Troia and you say, ah, I don't like this wine, therefore I must not like Nero di Troia. That's uh, probably not the case. You probably don't like the producer, you know, quite, quite honestly. Um, so do your best to look for artisanal wines. And then here I've got two different maps and I tried to fit it all in here for you. Let me, let me shrink this for a second. So the map on the right, they're first of all, they're both Appalachian maps. These are the subregions of, of Puglia. But on the left-hand side, the map is only showing you the DOCG classification wines. And if you don't know what the DOCGs are and the DOCs are, um, I have another video that breaks down exactly what those are. But basically, they are what we call subregions. Uh, these are smaller territories where very specific wines are made, and that these specific wines, they can't be made outside of the borders of these wines because they would lose authenticity at that point and the character and the style of the wine would be very, very different. Because we know that, first of all, the most influential aspect to uh, the flavor of a wine is the, the native grape varietal. But the second most important thing, and almost just as equal, is the vineyard where it's located. And so on the right side, you have all the DOC subregions here. And as you can see, there are dozens and dozens of them. I don't recommend you memorize them all. You'll lose your mind. Um, but I am going to give you a list of a few appellations to look for. Um, a couple other things about Puglia that's sort of important. You know, it's a big region. It's a big, big powerhouse wine region. They make a lot of wine. Um, they, they tend to, not on purpose, they tend to compete with Sicily. Those are the two regions that uh, seem to produce the most amount of wine every year. But basically in Puglia, if you look at the northern part of the region, the northern part of the hill, there is a red grape that dominates for the most part up there, and that's the Nero di Troia grape um, found in the north. Then when you go in the south, there are two red grapes that are sort of dominant down there. That is Primitivo, which is very famous, not just in Puglia, but throughout the world, and Negra Maro, also a very, very important red varietal that you find in the south. Um, all of these grape varietals can be found in blends and they can also be found in mono varietal versions. Okay, I highly recommend when you can, especially with uh, Primitivo, actually, honestly, with all of them, I think you should really look for mono varietals at first so you can just sort of taste the essence of that grape, um, its character, its flavor. And then, of course, um, there are going to be um, various sub regions in Puglia where. They are blended as part of tradition, and those are a lot of fun to taste as well. But in terms of appellations, um, there's three that you should check out. Look for wines that say Castel del Monte Nero, Tro Nero di Troia Reserva. It's a DOCG, um, so you can experience Nero di Troia. And then there's Primitivo di Manduria, DOC. That's uh, considered one of the top appellations for Primitivo grapes. And then you have Salice Salentino DOC, which is a blend of two grapes, Negro Amaro and Madacia Neira. So you can experience what a traditional blend would taste like from Puglia. So what's the first white wine you should try? I'd recommend you look for a Verdeca, Verdeca IGT Salento. Look for one of those, um, typically very light, very fresh, minerals, exotic fruits, and dry and crisp. First, red wine you should try. I put two because Primitivo is so famous at this point. Uh, many, many uh, people who 
know wines already know about Primitivo. So the other one you should definitely check out is Negro Amaro, um, fascinating wine. Uh, both full bodied wines, Primitivo tends to be the fruitiest. It might even be the fruitiest wine of all the wines in Italy. So for those of you who are maybe more familiar with Cabernet blends or more new world style wines, very fruit forward type wines, and you're not very, very familiar with Italian wines, or maybe you think Italian wines are very uh, dry and earthy for your taste, Primitivo really makes a great bridge into exploring the world of Italian wines. Negro Amaro is sort of uh, um, a little bit more complex in the sense that you can find many Negro Amaros that are very fruit forward, but they, they also have uh, a little bit more earth notes on the back. So it's, it's um, the wine can be very fruity, spicy, and savory all at the same time. So it's definitely a, a grape you should check out. And what's even cooler is um, you can also find, it's very common, you can find blends of Primitivo and Negro Amaro together. But I highly suggest you taste both of them as a mono varietal first so you can explore that. And uh, make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on any new videos about artisanal Italian wine and much more. Remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.